I'm 33 and my brother is 23. He graduated with his computer science degree last December and asked if he could move in with me temporarily while he looks for a job. I said sure, as long as you pay me $75 a week. A week later he flies to San Francisco from Florida and a week after that he lands a part-time job as a waiter. These last few months went pretty smoothly. He's enjoying San Francisco, making lots of friends, and, with my help, polishing up his resume, since he's having a bit of trouble finding a tech job. Before I go any further let me state that I've been cheated on by two different ex-girlfriends and therefore absolutely despise cheaters. My brother knows this. To make a long story short, last night, I find out that my brother is cheating on his long-distance girlfriend with a girl he met here. I show him the incriminating evidence and tell him to pack his crap and leave. All day today I've been bombarded by texts from our parents asking me to let him move back in. Even after I explained the situation they said to let him move back in anyway because he's family. I told a co-worker what happened and he tells me that my brother's romantic life isn't my business and that I'm a huge idiot for doing what I did. Meanwhile another co-worker who overheard that conversation says that my actions were completely justified. Everyone's the idiot here. Only because there is this disproportionate disconnect between action and punishment. He doesn't deserve to not have a roof over his head because he's cheating. And by your own volition you said, as long as he pays you $75 a week he can live there, you can't just change the terms to fit your comfort. His personal life is his own, and if my roommate did anything remotely similar I'd be pissed. Not the idiot. But, as ever in these types of threads, your brother may have tenancy rights, and you have to legally evict him. Especially as he was paying rent. I think you've taught your brother what it's like to have trust betrayed as well as the concept of consequences. You're the idiot. I understand where you're coming from, but I think some of your anger at your brother is misdirected. Sure it's shame getting cheated on, and it's understandable for some of those angry feelings to resurface in this context, but your reaction of kicking your brother out of his home is disproportionate. Your brother isn't justified in cheating on his girlfriend, but you don't have all the facts of his relationship and aren't privy to the inner workings of how things are going with his girlfriend. Honestly, post-college long-distance relationships like his are doomed to failure. He probably feels super lost going through all the transitions he's going through and could use some guidance and role modeling from his older brother. I don't have a problem with the idea of parents who stay home with their kids. It's not like that. I get that childcare is expensive and that oftentimes it just makes sense. What I have a problem with is my teenage daughter literally planning her life to only become a stay-at-home mom. As in, no college, no jobs, no certifications, nothing at all to support herself until that time might come. I told her that it doesn't have to be college, that not everyone needs college. But that she needs to do something to start making money to put away so that, if anything goes wrong with her plan, she has a way to support herself and the potential kids. Her feedback was that her backup plan was me and my husband, she would move in with us and go from there. We would help them survive. I told her then, what happens if we die, or we're incapacitated. She said, I don't know, mom, this is ridiculous, none of it is going to happen. I told her bluntly, that I don't want her becoming Nancy Botwin 2.0, that if something happens, she needs to have a backup plan, and something behind her other than relying on other people. I emphasize that again, it does not need to be college. She can start working retail to learn customer service skills that she can carry on to doing call center work from home if need be. She can start working as a receptionist somewhere, she can do any number of things. But she says no, she's going to plan to be a stay-at-home mom. With that all in mind, I ask her, when she graduates high school, what is she going to do? She said, just try to find a husband. Maybe marry someone in the military. I asked her again, in between that time, how is she going to pay her bills? Her rent? She said, she assumed she would be living at home. I told her no, and that she would be moving out. She could live at home, if she gets a job or tries to get some kind of community college degree or certification. But that if she insists on being a deadbeat loser and waiting for a man to come and rescue her, she's on her own. This didn't go over well, and I am now being held up as totally unreasonable, mean, a huge idiot, etc. I don't think I'm wrong at all. I want to set her up for a lifetime of success and happiness.
if this wonderful man who comes and whisks her away, knocks her up, etc., gets injured or dies, I don't want to have her come knocking at our door because she can't afford to take care of herself. Am I the idiot? I'd strongly steer her toward culinary arts and the hospitality industry. Many of those skills transfer over to being a good stay-at-home mom. Then, even if the husband and kids thing doesn't happen right away, she'd have a means of support while improving the skills, at least. I'm a stay-at-home mom five days a week, I work the front desk at a local hotel on weekends. It's the easiest job I've ever had. And it's very similar to what I do at home. Vacuum and clean the lobby, get stuff ready for breakfast, and soothe tantrums of tired people. I barely needed any training. Not the idiot. I'll admit I was ready to say you were the idiot being a stay-at-home wife myself. There is nothing wrong with being a stay-at-home partner if you and your partner agree, but you are right that can't be her only option. That's how you get into abusive situations when you are completely dependent on your partner to survive. I may not have a college degree, but I do have experience in sales and tech support, and if I needed out I could do it. Also her backup plan of just falling back on you makes her sound extremely entitled and spoiled. Sounds like she needs a bit of a wake-up. Absolutely not the idiot. You are correct that every person has a responsibility to support themselves and should continue making clear to her that you won't be available to support her for her whole life. I wouldn't invest too much in trying to change her overall goals so much as making your own boundaries clear, since obviously she is a teenager and is unlikely to be convinced by her parents' lectures. However, is your daughter aware that not everyone is able to have children? So, I recently got engaged to my fiancé after dating for 7.5 years. We started dating when we were 15 attended university together and she recently graduated with a nursing degree and I a sociology degree. We have an amazing relationship and both wanted to take it to the next level. She subtly sent me the ring she wanted a few years back and I have kept the info on it. We decided to get a puppy. Put the deposit down, and the day comes to pick her up, 8 week old lab. I decided to contact the breeder and set up the proposal with the puppy. The whole event went off flawlessly. It was an amazing and exciting day for our families, and everybody came in waves to celebrate with us and meet the puppy. This is where friend and his girlfriend come in. I have been friends with F since kindergarten and would consider us to be best friends. GF recently entered our lives and we have been civil. They come over and we have a bar back and drinks to celebrate. The drinking continues for a few hours and we are all quite drunk. Eventually, GF asks to see the engagement ring and my fiancé hands it to her. Before we know what's happening she has shoved it onto her ring finger and it is completely stuck. She starts to panic and fiancé, being a nurse, assures her multiple times throughout the night that there are no circulation issues. The panicking gets worse over the next three hours as we try to get her to calm down. All the while she keeps mentioning how she can't lose the finger because that's her wedding finger. We are all keeping it cool and trying every method in the book to get it off. Eventually we unanimously decide to leave it and try again in the morning because she has been tugging on it so much that her finger has swelled. One last check of circulation before fiancé goes to bed and it's fine. GF then demanding F to take her to the hospital once fiancé is inside and he persists for a while, but eventually gives in. About 45 minutes later, F returns to inform me that they cut the ring off at the request of GF. Fiancé loses it and slams the door and cries in bed with me for a few hours. The ring is returned broken by GF. The next day they offered to fix it and $100 was sent to fiancé. But after contacting jewelers and them saying that the band was too dainty to fix and the ring would likely have to be reset, she decides to just get another one because it is a custom setting. It was not a very expensive ring, about $600. GF then says she can't pay for it because she isn't getting enough shifts at work, and F steps up and sends the other $500. We are satisfied until F contacts fiancé saying that we should send the money back and GF is very sorry that we think she handled the situation inappropriately and not a lot of people would have sent that money. We are not budging and have already ordered a new ring to be custom made in three weeks, which is a similar situation to the original. Not the idiot. The ring was ruined directly by GF and she should be responsible for the replacement. $600 is actually getting off pretty easily and it could have been far more costly. 
she asked to see the ring, then put it on her own finger then, against everyone else's advice, went to the hospital where it was cut off and ruined. All due to GF actions. A replacement is the least she could do since she ruined the engagement evening for you and fiancé. She also owes an apology. Not the idiot. What idiot puts on someone else's engagement ring? Your friend's girlfriend is the reason why saying like see with your eyes, not with your hands exist. Most certainly you should not give them even a penny back, you don't get to squirrel out of paying for damaging something just because it was an accident. Not the idiot completely, drop both of them, because if anyone can say well, my idiot of a GF put on your fiancé's ring without permission, got it stuck then had it destroyed, and I somehow think this is all reasonable and want my money back. They don't need to be in your lives. They should be grateful you handled it as calmly as you did and only ask for repair costs. So, I, 30, am a pediatrician, but I haven't practiced since my twins June and Lillian, 4, were born. June has some fairly serious hearing issues, and while they can be fixed, it will require several surgeries over the years. My husband, 32, comes from a very wealthy family and is the only son and miracle baby of aging parents. They have been the sweetest people and basically set us up for life as soon as we were married, buying us a very nice house, paying for it to be furnished, etc. We didn't need this, since both of us are doctors, we met in med school, but they insisted. My family is messy, and my husband's family is more of my family now. My dad left us as soon as his wife would take him back, and my mom just dropped my brother and I off at her parents' house as soon as she could. So it's always been my brother and I, and we're fairly close. He married his college girlfriend, she's a tax lawyer, and he's an accountant. Sister-in-law makes a big deal about being a working mom, it's the subject of most of her posts on Instagram, and she thinks of me as some trophy wife. Ever since Lillian and June started going to a half-day preschool, I've been spending that time working with charities. Sister-in-law posted, so blessed to have a real job and not take advantage of charities. I get a nice new dress for date night. Only working mommies know how hard it is to have just a few good outfits. At least we're not spoiled. Their house was being remodeled when you know what happened, and they came to stay in our pool house. She's been making more snide comments, like I wish I could fit into your overpriced outfits, but I chose work over pilates. I tried to ignore her, but she said these things around my children. The final straw was when we were all sitting by the pool, I was playing in the shallow end with my daughters and husband, she was sitting poolside while my nephews played with my brother. She very loudly asked me hey, nice bikini top. So, are the breast real? I mean, how else do you keep husband interested? That was it. My husband started shouting at my brother to pack their bags now, and I was seeing red. I asked her first of all, I graduated med school, and I was able to resist sleeping through it, and hey, I may be worthless aside from having degrees from fantastic schools, but at least my children won't remember me as an idiot. She had an affair with two classmates in law school while with my brother, and I only learned this when my brother got drunk. Sister-in-law turned red and stomped off. We kicked them out, and they're staying at sister-in-law's mom's place. My brother and sister-in-law's mom having been texting me all weekend, saying I'm a heartless idiot and terrible aunt, kicking a family with children out onto the street and ruining her children's memories of their mother. Am I the idiot? I just couldn't stand one more moment with her. Not the idiot, this made me laugh. On the street. Oh my god the audacity and the absolute privilege to insinuate that someone who has a house and the money to renovate their house is homeless. As for ruining their memory of their mother. Don't worry, she will continue to do this throughout their life. No assistance needed. Not the idiot. But your brother is for condoning and allowing his wife to speak to you and post that crap online, knowing it's aimed at you. I'd have a serious conversation with your brother and let him know you'd like to have him remain in your life, but if he doesn't talk to his wife and stop her from taking jabs at you, he and his family won't be welcome in your life. No matter what the situation in the world is, no one can expect you to take them in and treat you well when they insult you the whole time. Your sister-in-law is a nightmare, making inappropriate comments in front of her kids and yours. Block her and your brother, temporarily at least, on every platform. Tell your brother you were gracious enough to invite his family into your home, only to be insulted and that you won't tolerate it anymore. Then block everything but his number and tell him when the two of them are ready to apologize, you'll consider it. You're not the idiot obviously. 
Alex and I have been dating since high school. We've been together eight years. Last year he decided to start college for degree in graphic design, and his parents are paying for his tuition. He was living in a college dorm first semester, then the pandemic started, he was removed from campus housing, and we decided to move in together. He was supposed to be doing college online via Zoom or Google, or whatever. I work a full-time job and a part-time job and I pay for all of the bills. Alex contributes $200 towards the $900 rent, which he gets from his parents. I've been supporting him without any complaints because I know when he's graduated, he'll be able to support both of us on a nicer salary than what I make as a grocery clerk and delivering pizza. Last week Alex confessed to me that he finished second semester of freshman year online and then decided to drop out because he didn't like the online classes. Up until now, I was under the impression that he was still in class because he spent most of his time on his laptop. I asked if he was looking for a job and he said no. He said his job is keeping the house clean and cooking dinner, but I feel like that's minimal effort. We live in a tiny apartment, we do not have pets, we do not have kids. Vacuuming once a week and making a meal for two people is not a real job. I took his keys and told him to leave. My name is on the apartment lease and I pay the rent. I think we were both thinking it'd just be for a night or two, but it's been a week now and he's only come back once to get some of his stuff he forgot. I haven't packed anything up yet and I'm not sure if I want him gone for good or not. I really don't think this is worth breaking up over, and I love living together with him, but I don't want to support an able-bodied adult man if he's not at least trying to do something to better himself. He's staying at his mom's house now and she's pissed at me. My own parents think I'm being ridiculous and overreacting. Our friends have all taken his side, and one of them even called me abusive for kicking him out. Alex hasn't said one way or the other whether he wants to come back, we actually haven't spoken and messaged much at all since I kicked him out. Am I the idiot? Not the idiot, because he's seemingly not asking to stay. It really looks like he has intentionally sabotaged both his education and your relationship. From all appearances, he looks perfectly happy to go home with mom and not come back to your apartment, I'm sorry to say. Why is everyone okay with him taking advantage of you? He doesn't want to finish his degree, fine. Get a job and contribute. You don't get to appoint yourself a house spouse without consulting with your partner. Drop him, drop your friends. You think your parents would want someone better for you. Not the idiot. He was actively deceiving you in order to avoid any sort of work. He was letting you do all the work, believing that he was contributing to the betterment of your combined futures. He was basically making you do all the horrible parts of being a couple and being okay with this fundamental inequality. He is a turd. I don't know what your family is thinking, but you deserve better.